Hello young scholars, I welcome you to yet another interesting class in history. In today's lesson, I will teach you Igbouku culture as one of the historical sites we have in Nigeria. And you will learn about the location of Igbouku, the tradition of the people and the people of Igoku. And let's talk about the location of Igoku. Igoku is located in Agwata local government area, Anambra State, Nigeria. The tradition of the people. Igbouku simply means Great Igbo and it is derived from a town in Agwata local government area of Anambra state, which is southeast Nigeria. Now, there are basically seven villages that made up the town. Now, these villages include Obiunu, Ungo. Akukwa, Umudige, Eziho, Ezigbo, and Etiti. It is in this town that the three main archaeological sites were the relics of the Inri dynasty, which was already great by the middle of the 9th century AD. The Inri dynasty was aided by Eze Inri, whose functions we are largely ceremonial and religious. The three archaeological sites that were discovered in Igooku are Igwazaya, Igbo Richard, and Igbo Jonah. Now, the first archaeological site, like I've just mentioned, is Igwazaya. The artifacts that were discovered from that archaeological site. We are a storehouse of regalias, and the site was discovered in 1938 by Azaya Anonze. The second archaeological site, Igbo Richard, and the artifacts from that archaeological site suggest a burial chamber. And lastly, the Igbo Jonah archaeological site. The artifacts from that uh, archaeological site reveals a refuse pit or a dump pit. Now, the discoveries of Igbo Richard and Igbo Jonah was done between 1959 and 1964. The archaeological sites of Igbo Richard and Igbo Jonah were excavated by a team led by Professor Tosan Shaw and some staff from the Nigerian National Museum at the request of the Nigerian colonial government. In 1938, a man called Azaya Anonze was digging a well at the back of his compound. That was when he stumbled upon the first set of artifacts that were discovered in Igoku in 1938. Now, after this discovery was made, the colonial government at the time that were in charge of the Nigerian territory had to bring in a foreign archaeologist by name Tosan Shaw and he led the excavation of the other two archaeological sites which are Igbo Richard and Igbo Jonah. Now at this point it is pertinent to note that 
the names that were given to this archaeological site in Igouku clearly shows the people that owns the properties where the artifacts were excavated. Like the first one that was excavated, Igbo Isaiah, the name of the person that has the compound was Isaiah Anonze, and subsequently, and subsequently, the other two sites, Igbo Richard and Igbo Jonah, were named such because they were the owners of the property on which the artifacts were excavated. The three main archaeological sites in Igbooku, as mentioned earlier, and other expenditures have given rise to the discoveries of many artifacts. Now, these artifacts include trading artifacts. Artifacts of Igbooku, such as Manila, are believed to be used for trading. Number two, ritual artifacts. A large number of the artifacts are those that were used for ritual purposes. Now, this is so because the Inri dynasty was largely a theocratic state. Such artifacts are poultry vessels, bronze bowls, spear shaped bowls, animal pendants, crescent shaped vessels and so on. Number three of the artifacts that were discovered in Iboku include military or unseen artifacts. Some artifacts are those that are believed to be used by for war and hunting, for instance, breastplates, swords, and so on. Number four, artifacts for priests. Some other artifacts from Igbooku are those that are believed to be used by priests and other important figures in the society. For example, crowns, fly wicks head, pendants, staff ornaments, amongst others. Number five, adornment artifacts. Some artifacts from Igbooku are used for adornments like jewelries, a corpse adorned in a regalia, a small pendant in the shape of a local sheep's head with sacrificial on the face. Now let's move over to the people of Igbooku. The people of Igbooku, according to oral traditions, are said to be the lost tribe of Israel who migrated through River Niger to settle at their present location. Another tradition of origin posits that the people of Igbooku originated from Benin, while the third tradition of origin believes that the people of Igbooku do not have any ancestral link with other people. It is said that they are believed to be the aborigines of the particular location that they occupy till this day. In this case, the belief says that they occupy their present location right from the creation of the world. They said that Shuku or Obasi, whom is believed to be their supreme being, gave the Iri was the spirit the body of a man and the iri came down to settle in anambra river basin obasi also gave eri two wives namely nono and oboli nono had five children while oboli had only one child according to this mythology the human form which Obasi gave Eri began the history of man on earth. Igbo people believed that they were never ruled by one authority or king. And the saying, Igbo have no king. The people of Igbo who were hardworking craftsmen, farmers, and great traders. This attribute is still seen 
in the modern day Igbo man. With this, we've come to the end of our class for today. Now, a quick recall on what we've discussed so far. We discussed the location of Igbouku. We talked about the meaning of Igbouku. We also went further to discuss the various archaeological sites that were discovered in Igbouku and the artifacts that were gotten from each archaeological site. And we went further to talk about the people of Igoku. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in our next class. Stay safe.